Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna be checking out a video titled UK versus, well, it has V actually, that's, that's interesting. It actually doesn't have VS, which is, <laughs> I just realized that. Anyways, the title of the video is UK versus US healthcare. My experience, she's diabetic, and uh, that's also the name of the channel, she's diabetic, so I'm imagining that she's indeed diabetic, which is quite unfortunate. However, she's sure never experienced, so um, let's lock in and let's see what's the experience between the United States and the UK. I already know how the healthcare works in the United States, so I'm really looking forward to understanding um, possibly the um, healthcare in the UK, as um, obviously I don't live in the United Kingdom. Uh, but yeah, if you guys have any recommendations, please click that link in the pinned comment section and you'll be able to recommend whatever video want to recommend for me to react to and uh, I'll check it out as soon as possible and uh, yeah without further ado let's go into this video. So some of you may know I spent most of my adult life in the UK and I'm a British citizen so I uh, really only had experience with the NHS in terms of my adult interaction with taking care of my health and a lot of you guys have asked what has it been like that transition and um, well hard. First of all, the big difference, uh, you come to the end of your appointment or your blood test or even before these items and it's money please. <sighs> you better have some money. And that may sound obvious but it is so much more pervasive than just the act of handing over a credit card or paying your insurance bill every month. You feel like the healthcare here is a class system and I think that's simply because it is like you go through these different insurance packages and like maybe they're like bronze silver gold platinum that's literally how you can filter them on the side of the screen and I mean yes they're they're signifiers to denote how much coverage you're gonna have or your I don't even know your deductible shenanigans I can't even try to stay neutral on this subject, I think it's fucking ridiculous. I know the NHS is not perfect, and I know the UK and the NHS in general have been in and continue to be in a lot of trouble, so I'm not just sitting here being like, they got it all figured out and we're screwed up here. No, that's not what I'm saying. But in terms of a care for your people, all I can say is in the UK, I felt universally cared for, and here, I feel like if I have the funds to pay for care, then I'm allowed to be healthy. So easily number one, the most confusing thing has been navigating what insurance to get. Luckily through my job, I'm self-employed, but I get insurance through my job sort of, it is pretty much you get this package and that's that. So I didn't really have to choose so intricately. Number two has been finding the right doctors. Your, your choice in doctors. In the UK, your GP pretty much does everything. They see kids, they see adults, they see asthmatics, they see people with mental health conditions. That doctor has the power to treat all of those things, to prescribe you antidepressants, to prescribe you an inhaler, to treat a baby and an elderly person. And this is all I ever knew. So I had an endocrinology team and I had my GP. That was pretty much it. Every year I'd go for an eye exam where they'd screen my eyes and take scans of my retinas and all that stuff to make sure wow. there wasn't any degradation in my eyes due to diabetes. But that was pretty much it. Here I have spent so much time registering with different doctors. So much so to the point where I finally registered with the, the GP or your primary care physician as they call it here and I, I was like, okay, great, uh, I'm diabetic so I need a, my insulin prescription. And she just said, oh no, 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 like I don't prescribe insulin, absolutely not, you have to go to your endocrinologist for that. So I did have an appointment with my endocrinologist but because he was, a, you know, a good endocrinologist that had a waiting list, I couldn't see him for like three months. So I was like, oh, what do I do? And I was also so shocked that the primary care couldn't prescribe insulin. It was totally, totally 
categorically unwilling. So that has been a big shock to me in that in order to get the treatment that I need, I have to go to all these different doctors and every doctor has somewhat of a different system. So, you know, you go in, you fill out the paperwork, you go through all the like initial questions and then they want their own blood work, which all costs money, money, money. And yeah, at the end of all these appointments, money please. You gotta have the money to pay for the insurance and then you gotta have the money to take time off work to go see these various different doctors because they're different places. The transport to get there or the transit time to get there is different. It just demands so much of a person and you have to be so organized and on top of it, which I always thought like in the UK, if you're your own advocate, you can get the care you need. And I still believe that, but you would always be getting that through your general practitioner for the most part. Whereas in right. the US, I feel equally, if not more, the need to advocate for myself because you're choosing doctors from a directory of a thousand different options, which sounds great, and there is a plus to that, but it's also incredibly complicated and confusing. But the reality is the reason why there's so much doctors available is a perfect example of finance. That's really what it is. So uh, the more options you have, it's the more screwed up I can be as a company. I can literally just be like, oh yeah, you get this benefit. With over here, you get this benefit. With over there, you get this benefit. This benefit, this benefit, blah, 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 blah. And it's all just a circle. And then all these guys just charge you unnecessary fees because it's a competition between all of them. So um, I think I even heard about like this one thing that Finland has where, you know, phone bills cannot go over a certain threshold in a like a two year period because of some monopoly that they're trying to prevent from happening. And um, yeah, literally since I've been in Finland, I'm now on a second, you know, network provider for my phone. So yeah, shit like that, but um, yeah. And time consuming to look up all the reviews and make sure you're choosing a doctor that is going to be good for you. The other thing I think is a very like dividing factor that I've seen is the amount of time you need to be able to devote, yes, but also like savvy, smart nature you need to have to know that, for example, I can go to this pharmacy and I can get a better rate there. My insurance works best with this pharmacy or sometimes I should use my insurance for this prescription, but other times I should use like a coupon or a good RX that that is actually going to make that more cost effective. You need to be constantly on the alert and bobbing and weaving through these different options to be savvy to make sure you are getting the best deal. Which like, I'll be honest with you, deal and healthcare it, these are just concepts that in my adult life have not been alive in my mind. And I know I'm very, 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 very lucky to say that. But I feel like you need to be pretty darn educated and have the confidence to call places up and to use coupons that you might not be sure are going to work or advocate for yourself when you know it's right through the insurance. The word coupons in healthcare just... That shit ain't never going to sit right, bro. But the person providing isn't providing the same thing that you were told you were going to get. Th these are these are all things that the consumer here really needs to have if you're going to get the most bang for your buck, I guess, which don't we all want that? Especially when you're dealing with a chronic condition that you have many different medications that you have to keep renewing every single month. You want to make sure you're doing like the smartest thing possible. So we relocated about a year ago and because of this being a whole new system to me, I am only just getting to grips with things and getting in place a structure of how I'm going to get my medications every month. And I really don't mean to sound like I'm complaining or bashing the American healthcare system, but this is just what I've experienced and a genuine comparison to what I experienced on the NHS in the UK for the last 
15 years. And I should say as an addendum to the it's free in the UK, the NHS is free. a taxed system. So I believe it is about 20% of the people's income tax goes toward the NHS. Don't quote me on it, but I believe that's a general gist. So you are paying for it in a certain sense, absolutely. But it's in alignment in terms of the percentage to your own personal income taxes. And a lot of people have a big problem about that because then the more wealthy are funding it more so than the less wealthy. And so, I hear that, but from an ethical and moral perspective, I personally find that to be a more suitable way to care for. If you make it more, why is it bad that you pay more? Like if tax, if uh, imagine if tax was um, not a percentage and it was a uh, deductible, like, okay, everybody has to pay $500 a month for tax entirely for everybody i'm making 40 thousand a month you making two thousand a month how how does that seem fair like if anybody actually logically just look and say to me or say about this situation be like oh yeah it's not fair that i'm paying more like what are you talking about dude like you're making more so you should pay more it's this it's not that complicated is it but yeah I, 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 I just, I, I don't really get it, but whatever. A public. And if I'm paying more than people that are less fortunate financially, I'm really okay with that. But I understand that that can be a very divisive subject and, and yeah, I get it. But I'm so certain of where I stand on that front that I'm happy to say it. And if you want to come at me in the comments, that's fine. Moving to the US, and I always knew this, and it was a factor I had to get to grips with when we decided to move. And it's so much more complicated than I could ever have understood watching US bloggers and whatnot talk about it. You can hear people talk about this, but it's not till you're really in the thick of it that like you realize just how complicated and overwhelming it is. This isn't meant to be a bash on the US system. The quality of care that I've found has been excellent. It's just the way, the route to get to that care and what you need to have to have access to that care bothers me a lot. And I'm lucky because I have the care. Damn, I was hoping to hear about the, uh, the UK's healthcare system a lot more than um, freaking American healthcare because I already know about that. ...ability to do what I need to do and pay for what I need to pay to get access to what I need to not only survive, but like thrive and live a healthy life. Yeah, so I fully say. stand up and appreciate that as well. Like I say, always, I wish you great blood sugars, straight CGM lines, if you can have access to a CGM. Uh, but most of all, I wish you a happy, healthy mind with it all. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah, shout out to her, man. I'm sorry about the diabetes stuff, man. But, um, healthcare in the United States has never been great. Uh, you know, there's a lot of dudes out there fighting for it to be this and fighting for, be, for it to be this way or that way. But at the end of the day, I still think those dudes are all just politicking. Um, but... You know, the day when major changes comes, you know, in a healthcare situation for the United States, I don't know when that's going to happen. But I do know that a lot of people are being, you know, affected by it, especially those ones, you know, who are not in a position like, you know, what she mentioned she was in. So, um, yeah, quiet, you know, unfortunate. But if you guys have any videos about the, um, you know, UK's healthcare system, let me hear about it in the comment section down below. And uh, if you have any video suggestions about that, let me hear about it in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching. I'm out of here. Peace.